Hi there, Adventure Tastic Alex here with a bike review. This is my Breezer Radar Expert 2021 bicycle. This bike is a touring slash gravel bike, so it is catered for off road adventures. Obviously, right now it does the Schwabby Marathon tires, which are great for touring, but um, if you wanted to do some off roading, you'd need to put some 2.1 mountain bike tires, which is it's got clearance for. Um, you know, it's good for that stuff, gravel grinding, all the way to like long distance touring, which is what I did with this, rode right it to Melbourne from Sydney. And it is got pretty relaxed geometry. Um, quite like it, it's quite upright, so you don't get a sore back or anything, especially for a drop bar bike. But quite a, as you can see here, it's got quite wide, wide drop bars, if you look. Got like they're like wider than normal. Like a normal road bike would have bars would be like this, like the drops would be this narrow, but mine are quite wide. I think it's for stability off road, not too sure. But yeah, that's that. And yeah, so I've owned this for about like you know three months. Um, I've ridden about two thousand kilometer, two thousand kilometers on it, I believe. Yeah. I also found that the, um, the steel frame um, damps the bumps great, especially all the weight on the bike. When you have pannier here, all the water in the front and water on the frame and you got the bags on the back full of you know food and stuff. Um, yeah, I do feel like because of the weight and also the steel frame is a bit more flexy than like a standard like aluminium frame I found. Because I, I used to own a hardtail mountain bike when I used to mountain bike. Um, I was made of alloy, so yeah, definitely a lot of difference in the the frame stiffness and stuff like that, so yeah. Okay, so here's a quick little look at my bike. So at the back, we have well, the gear. We have the Azure panniers. They are 100% waterproof. Um, I think a pair of these cost me about 140 but yeah I had some cheapy ones before this I had these red azure ones which were designed for commuting absolutely horrible wouldn't recommend those but definitely recommend these um, this front one I'm not sure just some scorpion brand or something um, this isn't waterproof so not the best idea I should have got like something waterproof for the front but it does the job um, I'd usually just keep the clothes in the back so the so the clothes won't get drenched in the front <laughs> let that the hard way um, also on the top we have this little phone holder thing it's, you know you can just hold all your belongings like you know keys stuff like that that you need it's got my lock on top of here just dangling which is just easy to access and uh, yeah. I should also mention if you plan on doing any camping I recommend you also pack really lightly because I did the stupid idea of not packing lightly. Okay so this is the the new one, the new sleeping bag that I got, it's a compact. Perfect. I'll show you what I took on my first tour. Ugh. I took this when I should have taken this. You know what I mean? And especially, this is just a sleeping bag. <laughs> this is pretty stupid of me. Um, don't make that mistake. Another stupid mistake I also made on my first tour is taking a three-man tent. Now, the reason I got a three-man tent was it had room at the front so I can store my bike so it wouldn't get stolen. But when I was stealth camping, there's no people nearby and for the most part, the places I've been were not dodgy. There were a couple of places that were dodgy, but you just don't camp at like really dodgy locations, I found. Um, so yeah, also, yeah, don't buy a three-man tent, buy a one-man tent and just lock your bike out outside. I reckon that's the way to do it. If you are, ooh. <laughs> if you are also in a market for a touring, touring bike, gravel bike, whatever you're looking for, um, an adventure bike, I would always recommend trying to find 
something that has a lot of bottom mounts because that will make your life a lot easier. So my bike came with five bottle mounts, so two on the fork, and I think three on the frame. I can't use one of them on the fork because um, I've got a pannier bag on the front on one side, but I do have a spare free side on the on the left side, which I use a bottle, which is pretty convenient. Um, look, the reason I um, mention this is because um, water is a very important part of um, long distance riding um, if you're not if you're not hydrated oh, thought I was somebody <laughs> um, if you're not hydrated you're not gonna make it very far so always have water with you I also run um, flat pedals as I can move my feet around when I'm touring um, I chose this over SPDs just because of price and um, also it gives me the feeling of freedom, so I can just like wiggle my feet whenever I feel like it. <laughs> I know it's a bit weird, but it's just a nice feeling to have. So I got the Schwabi Marathon Plus Touring Tires. Now these tires are really good. I cannot recommend them anymore. They are probably the best tires I've ever owned. They are a bit on the steep side. I think I purchased them for about 85 Australian dollars each. Um, but as you can see the tread, I've done about 500 Ks on it and it still has these little spiky things on them. So, and this, the tread still looks relatively new and it's pretty impressive for about 500 kilometers to maybe even a thousand kilometers I've ridden this tire. And yeah, and just after maybe about a thousand Ks on the WTVs, they just completely wore out because of the weight of the, you know, the bags and all those the tent and all that but maybe I've done the same amount on this and it still looks brand new because it's made of Kevlar and yeah and it doesn't puncture which is another thing I've found I haven't had a single puncture on this and the WTB Riddlers great off-road but I've had about four punctures with them and it has been very annoying this bike comes with TRP's high row brakes now this has a lock on it which is really convenient oh, if it will focus so if you're traveling you can take off the wheel and the hydraulic fluid won't compress the pistons and like you know you'd have to reset the calipers and everything so it's got that lock there um, but it's also mechanically actuated that's what the cable down here is for yeah I didn't put the the nipple on it but you know that's okay the bike also comes with a Shimano Dior 2x9 drivetrain, which I found off-road to be just brilliant. Just It doesn't make much sound, not much chain slap to be honest. Just all in all a decent drivetrain. And all in all I think what makes a bike is adding some personal touches. And one thing I have actually done is put this, this Yorkshire Lad. Um, keyring on it because on my dad's side is uh, Yorkshire so um, yeah just a bit of customization which is always nice um, also have another st sticker on here if you can see demolition for my um because I ride BMX nice to have that with me you know just a little reminder of the other discipline that I ride and yeah so yeah, all in all, this is the like honestly my favorite bike. Um, I've got three bikes. I've got a road bike, a BMX, and I also you know this bike obviously. And if I can only choose one, I'll take this any day, just because it's just so versatile. You can just take it off road, go on like a bike packing journey. You can go bike touring. You can do whatever. It's great, and yeah. That's about it. So yeah, so um, thank you for sticking to the end. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it. Make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. That will be lovely. And uh, see you in the uh, next video. Totally do's.